guess who got a new camera? It was me! Oh my god, it's so weird looking at myself. <laughs> <laughs> um, up until now I've been filming with a camcorder that doesn't have flip screen so yeah now I had a very strange experience of being able to just lift my eyes a little and then I could see myself I just did it then but because I'm not used to it I'm hoping that I won't do it all the time so you won't get that effect of me looking slightly above the camera see I'm not doing it right now I'm gonna be good I did it just then <laughs> Anyway, welcome. Today I'm going to be doing my favourite reads of 2017 video. These are all books that I read in 2017, a few of them came out in 2017, um, but I read books for them any year at any time. Well, any year in the past, obviously. I'm not reading books for the future. Wait, I am reading books for the future sometimes because I got proof copies and I proofread my partner's books. So, in a way, I am reading books for the future. Now, without any further ado, my favourite number one book of the year was The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. What can I say? This book is perfect in every way. I don't know if there's anything I can really say to add to the heaps and heaps and heaps of praise that this book has received, but I would just like to add that what surprised me the most about this book was not only is it touching and heartwarming, but it's also really funny. Um, I think I said when I reviewed it in the monthly wrap up for the month in which I read it, that there's a scene towards the end in the car which is really tense and really funny at the same time. I didn't even know before reading this that that was possible for a scene to be that tense and that hilarious all at once. Angie Thomas is a genius as far as I'm concerned. The other books I'm going to talk about in this video are in no particular order at all. I just can't rank them because there's so many different genres and categories. It would just be a waste of time really because I don't think these books can be directly compared to each other. So, the first book I'm going to mention as being a favourite read of this year was 168 Hours You Have More Time Than You Think by Laura Vanderkam, which is the best personal development book I have ever read. It's so practical and down to earth, but it's inspiring at the same time. I loved it and I'd have read it again already if I hadn't lost my copy somewhere in my flat. I honestly don't know where it is. I think it might be down the back of the bookshelf somewhere, but I keep looking down the back and I can't see it. Like, you know, from around the edge. So I think maybe I'll have to pull the books out one day and have a good proper look for it because I'd really like to read it again. The second book I'm going to mention, I do have my copy of, and that is A Quiet Kind of Thunder by Sarah Bernard. I think this is an adorable romance, absolutely perfect, that touches on some really serious issues really well. It deals with selective mutism, and selective mutism is a bit of a cliche subject in YA, but it came across really fresh and original and interesting, and the other character in the main couple, is death and so it explored some things that I hadn't seen explored in a way a bit before and I loved it. The next book I'm going to mention is Giant Days. Um, my partner gave me this as a present at some point and I read it and really enjoyed it. I've been meaning to pick up the other volumes in the series for ages. I don't need to try very hard because my partner has them all on his iPad and I keep meaning to borrow it and never getting around to it. I really, really must do this in 2018 because it was such a delightful story about girls at university and I want to see what happens next to them. Now, I normally am not a fan of family dramas. If I pick up a book and see that it's a family drama or it's about a divorce or even, to be honest, if I see the word husband on the back of the book, I'm going to put it down, almost guaranteed. But there was so much hype and good talk about Everything I Never Told You by Celeste Ng that when I saw a copy in a local bookshop sweat book swap shelf <laughs> I could talk um, I decided to give it a go and I was not disappointed it was a really interesting family drama on the one side you have a man who comes from an immigrant family and who desperately wants to fit in and on the other hand you have a woman who wants to not be your typical woman of that time period and she wants to do something more exciting with her life 
and then in, they get married and they have such different hopes and dreams that it inevitably leaves problems for them and their children. It was just fascinating and really really sad and moving and I really thought it was a brilliant book. I didn't think I was going to love Neon Dell as much as I did. I don't know if it's pronounced that way, but I'm just going to roll with it because I spent far too long talking about this subject when I did my monthly wrap up for the month I read in. Um, because I didn't love um, Marisai, the first book in this series, that much, but boy, it really blew me away. I just loved the different worlds that different characters came from and how it all built together into an adventure and these characters developing bonds of sisterhood. And yeah, there's nothing really more to say about it. I was just really, really blown away. And I'm looking forward to reading the next book whenever that comes out. I was not surprised at all by the brilliance of The Time of the Ghost by Diana Wynne-Jones. This book was just amazing. It was fascinating the way it was all put together. It's about a girl who is a ghost or maybe not a ghost and which sister is she and how is she going to stop this evil thing from killing them all and destroying everything and oh there were some awful parents in it as well. Parents you will absolutely love to hate. They are so bad, so disturbingly bad. It was great. All my book club YA reads this year have been brilliant. We started off with The Hate You Give, then we read A Quiet Kind of Thunder, and the third book we read was Moxie. I love Moxie. We all love Moxie, really. It was just brilliant about a girl who finds a way to strike back against sexism in her high school by creating a zine following in her mother's footsteps. It was fantastic and so much fun and had this really warm feeling of community. I also joined a second book club at work and we read Golden Hill by Frances Bufford which I thought was so good that I bought a copy for my sister for Christmas. <laughs> it's about a man who comes to New York from London in the very early days of New York when it's not much bigger than a village and he has to keep his identity secret and his reasons for being there secret but everybody there wants to find out. Everybody there is so curious about him because he's a newcomer and he's got a lot of money. And it was so much fun. I described it to my sister as being like the miniaturist meets an action film and I think I stand by this description. I like to have a non-fiction book on the go to read while I'm eating breakfast. I started off with 168 hours that I've already mentioned and then I moved on to Women in Clothes. This was my breakfast book for five whole months and it was just gorgeous. I loved reading about all these different women's experiences of clothes and their thoughts about clothes. Uh, it could have been twice the size and I still wouldn't have regretted a moment I'd spent on it. Um, it's just brilliant. If you're interested in fashion and clothes and thinking about those things, then definitely give it a go. In 2017, I started listening to podcasts again. I got into podcasts way, way back in the day. About 11 years ago, I used to listen to podcasts and my favourite one was Craftlet. I read Pride and Prejudice by listening to the Craftlet episodes about it while knitting. I remember I was knitting this scarf. Yes, I was knitting a scarf and on my bed in my university house till like 3am because it was getting to the bit, the really important bit with Elizabeth and Darcy and oh yeah it was really really intense and for some reason not much longer after listening to that first book I stopped listening to this podcast, I stopped listening to podcasts in general really and then I just left it alone for several years but I got really back into podcasts in 2017 and I decided to revisit Craftlet and I picked up where I left off with the very first episode that is about A Tale of Two Cities and so I listened to the whole of A Tale of Two Cities which I don't know maybe that's what put me off you know the beginning of A Tale of Two Cities after the initial intro is not great there's this whole bit of a carriage and yeah it's sort of just very wordy but 
listening to it this time round with the brilliant guidance of Heather Ordover, the podcaster, I just fell in love. And what I fell in love with, or rather who I fell in love with, was Madame Defarge. She is such a great villain and such a badass. She just... Madame Defarge. In my head, I like to pretend that everything works out well for Madame Defarge. She's like semi-redeemed, but also maintains some of her badass qualities. And you know, that's not what happens in the book, but yeah. If I were to write fanfic about A Tale of Two Cities, it would all be about Madame Defarge. Dickens' female characters are very problematic. He is not amazing at nuance. His female characters tend to be very one note, but yeah, I just think Madame Defarge deserved better. Finally, the very last book I read in 2017 was Nimona. And obviously I picked this up in the last couple of days of the year because I knew it wouldn't take me very long to get through it as it's a graphic novel. And yeah, I finished it in time. I met my Goodreads goal because of this book and I enjoyed every single second. It's so beautiful and just such a brilliant, funny story that I just think it's perfect. It, you probably know what Nimona is about if you've watched booktube ever before in your life. Um, but, you know, I'll do a little recap for you. It's about a girl who turns up at the door of a villain one day and says she's going to be his assistant. And it turns out she's a shapeshifter with enormous, amazing powers. And yeah, things go wrong from there. So those are my favourite reads of 2017. I read loads of great books that year and you know I could do a whole load of honourable mentions but basically I'll just be repeating my monthly wrap-ups and listing every book I enjoyed so I won't do that. Instead I'll refer you to a blog post I wrote to go along with this video where I have a little bit more reviewy type talk about all of the books I've mentioned here today. So thank you very much for watching, subscribe if you'd like to see more from me, give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, you'll see me again soon. Bye!